Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Couple detained after ex-boyfriend is killed in St. Anne. A man was stabbed to death and his ex-girlfriend and her spouse taken into custody following an incident along the Costa Drive in Ultra St. Anne Sunday morning. The dead man has been identified as 31-year-old Romain Chin, a handyman from Main Street in Pineapple Ultra Royals. The 27-year-old ex-girlfriend and her spouse are both from Port Mary of St. Mary. She reported the end of the relationship after she accused Jin of sexual assault in her daughter. Jin was arrested in connection with this allegation. It was reported that shortly after 1 a.m., the couple was along the Costa Drive when Jin visited the location. An argument developed between him and his ex-girlfriend, the police stated. The new spouse, it is understood allegedly, intervened and a knife was used to stab Jin several times. He was taken by a passing motorist to the St. Anne's Bay Hospital, where he was admitted in serious condition. Chin succumbed to his injuries around 6.35 a.m. while undergoing treatment. Following this, the couple was picked up in Port Maria and taken into police custody. Man swept out to sea at Negril Resort, search continuing. A Jamaican man who was vacating with his girlfriend at a resort in West End, Negril in Westmoreland, is feared dead after he was carried away by strong currents while trying to rescue his partner about 10 a.m. on Sunday. The couple reportedly checked into the Samsara Cliff Hotel on Saturday night and was in the process of taking pictures on the cliffs at the resort on Sunday morning when the woman slipped and fell into the ocean. Her partner reportedly jumped in to try to save her but was swept away by the rough sea being experienced since last week. The woman was rescued by the hotel owner's son and they were pulled from the water by members of the Marine Division of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the police have confirmed. Senior Superintendent of Police in charge of First Mall and Wayne Joseph said a search for the missing man was continuing. Former Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Professor Winston Davison, has died. Professor Dr. Winston Davison, who served as Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health in the late 1970s, has died after a short illness. Dr. Davidson reported the pass away on Sunday at the University Hospital of the West Indies. He was a close advisor to former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller. Dr. Davidson was also an architect of the 2011 Jeep document, the source for 2011 Manifesto of the People's National Party. The late doctor has received a number of honors and awards in recognition of his work. Among these are the Command of the Order of Distinction for Services in Medicine in 2003 and the Pearl Award for more than 30 years of distinguished and outstanding service to the people of Jamaica as Justice of the Peace in the parish of St. Andrew in 2008. Dr. Davidson died leaving wife Dr. Sonia Davidson, Neil Lambie, and three daughters. A former permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health and Wellness and well as well as the head of the School of Public Health at the University of Technology. Professor Davidson was a scholar and one who provided significant leadership in various aspects, including and in particular areas of telemedicine. Professor Davidson played a, an important advisory role, formally and informally, during the COVID period, and I appreciated his insights and his willingness to give advice. And for that, I will always be grateful. I want to take the opportunity to express my condolences to his family, to his daughters, to his wife, and to those who worked and associated with him. Holness Lord Police after suspect held in killing of students. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has commended the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF on capturing the person of interest who was held in connection with the brazen murder of two schoolboys in Salt Spring, St. James. Holness had directed the security forces to spare no effort in apprehending the individual and bringing him to justice. The Prime Minister commended the police while he was briefed by Deputy Commissioner of Police Clifford Blake on Sunday at the Norman Mann International Airport after arriving back on the island from Saudi Arabia. I think Jamaica should take note of the effectiveness of our security forces and you know we generally define effectiveness sometimes in terms of the use of a hammer on these criminals. Maybe people would rejoice that this culprit was killed. The truth of the fact is that our security forces must follow all the necessary protocols regarding the use of force and so you were able to capture him alive. And I'm certain that he will go through the process and be brought to the courts, Holness stated.
On Saturday, it was revealed that a person of interest in the November 6th triple murder was apprehended by the police. According to the police, on Friday between 3 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., a coordinated intelligence-led operation was effectively carried out in Barnetown, St. James, culminating in the apprehension of the person of interest. The police also revealed that during the operation, a maintenance worker at the guest house was also detained pending further investigation. The success of the state of public emergency in St. James has not only been an inspiration for the citizens of St. James, but it has been an inspiration for the members of the security forces. We are utilizing the powers under the regulation to go after these gang members and last night's successes could be attributed to this operational success that we're having, the SP Blake stated. The SP Blake went on to reveal that some of these gang members have dispersed and are in other areas, but the pursuit of them continues. Following the shooting, the police identified the victims as a 7-year-old and a 9-year-old student, both from the same community in Salt Spring and a 26-year-old. The three were shot to death when a gunman opened fire on a taxi they were in. Police believe that Hill was the intended target of the gunman. We are utilizing the powers under the regulation to go after these, these gang members and last success will be attributed to you know this operational success that we are. Whenever we have this kind of operation, the displacement effect, for example, Hanover and Trelawney are usually displacement parishes for these gang members. But also communities, what they do, they'll move from one community to another community. And our at this time, we are saying that a lot of them remain in St. James in certain communities and we need to continue this operational push in yeah. order to apprehend them. JHDA Montego Bay Chapter donates water storage tanks to school for the deaf. The Montego Bay Chapter of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association JHDA has shown its continued commitment to social responsibility by recently donating two 1,000 gallon water tank storage to the Jamaica Christian School for the Deaf. This school, which is located in the Eden District of Montego Bay, is a beacon of hope for children with hearing impairments in Western Jamaica. The donation of the water tanks comes as a response to the school's long-standing challenge of poor access to running water and is faced by the surrounding community. As such, the donation aims to alleviate the struggles and impact of water scarcity at the institution. Diane Thompson, the principal of the Jamaica Christian School for the Deaf, expressed her deep gratitude for the invaluable donation. The addition of these water tanks will greatly enhance our ability to meet the water needs of our students and staff. It will improve their welfare and create a more conducive learning environment, stated Thompson. Nadine Spence, chairperson of the JHDA Montego Bay chapter, emphasized the association's dedication to social responsibility in the Western region. We are proud to support the Jamaica Christian School for the Deaf and to contribute to their mission on providing quality education and support services for the children with hearing impairments. The donation is also part of the association's continued effort to support the school as in previous years a fire alarm system was installed with additional enhancement to suit their needs, stated Spence. The water storage tanks will not only address the immediate challenges faced by the school but also boost its capacity in various ways. Water harvesting and increased storage capacity will enable the institution to maintain a consistent water supply ensuring the well-being and comfort of the students and staff. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell.